this is your last, I believe your last method for factoring. It's called grouping, but I actually call it backwards distributive property because that's what you're doing. So if you remember, the distributive property is taking a term and multiplying it by everything on the M side term. So you would say, okay, those multiply to give you 3x squared, and then that multiplies to give you 2x. Factoring by grouping is just saying, okay, you're taking your answer and you want to go backwards. So what do these have in common? Each term has an x. So you're going to factor out an x. So the x goes on the outside and then you're left with 3x plus 2. Okay, so we're going to use that idea today. So factoring by grouping starts very similar to all the other ones. You take your A and your C and you multiply them. So A is 2 and C is 12, so that, or sorry, 6, so that gives you 12. And then again, we need factors of 12 that will add up to B. So I got 1 and 12. I got 2 and 6, and I got 3 and 4. Okay, so the ones that will add up to 7 are these ones. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're taking this trinomial and we're splitting up the 7. So the 2x squared stays the same. And you're going to split the 7 into two terms instead of one term. So we can say that 3x plus 4x, if I add those together, it will still be 7x. I have not changed anything. It has one more term, but it's the same value. So 3x plus 4x is 7x. Those are the same. Okay, so now we're going to do that idea of backwards distributing. Um, we're going to find our greatest common factor. So we're going to look at the first two terms, and then we're going to look at our second two terms, our second last two terms. So if I look at the first two, I ask, okay, what do they have in common? Well, the numbers don't have a greatest common factor, but they each have an x. So we are going to factor out an x. So 2x squared becomes 2x. I take away one of those x's. And then 3x just becomes 3. If you wanted to double check it, I could say, okay, x times 2x would give me 2x squared. And then x times 3 would give me 3x. So I didn't change anything. I just factored it out. It's still the same value. Um, it just looks a little different. Okay, so we did the first term or the first set. Now we're going to do the second set. So we got 4x plus 6. What do they have in common? They don't both, they don't each have an x, but they do have a common number. So make sure you keep that plus sign in front. They each have a 2. And then 2 times 2 is 4. And then 2 times 3 is 6. So it's still the same. 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 3 is 6. It is still the same. But we kind of went backwards. Okay, so the last step is now doing that again. We say, okay, what does this term have in common with this term? Well, they each have a 2x plus 3. So we're going to factor that out. So it's like a big factor. So we get 2x plus 3 on the outside, and then your next factor is what you're left with. So on my left, I'm left with an x. On my right, I'm left with a positive 2. So now it is fully factored.
Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so we get 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. So step number one, multiply a and c, 24. Okay, factors of 24. We got 1 times 24. We got 2 times 12. We got 3 times 8. And then we got 4 times 6. So one of these needs to add up to 10. Okay, well, it's not going to be that one. It's not going to be that one. It's not going to be that one. So it's going to be this one. Okay, so we are going to split 10x into what? 4x and 6x. Okay, so 3x squared plus 4x plus 6x plus 8. Same thing, I just split apart the 10. Okay, now we're going to take the first two, see what they have in common, and then we're going to take the last two see what they have in common. So we know the first one has an X in common. It doesn't look like the numbers have anything in common. So the first term will turn into 3X and the second term will turn into 4. Okay, we'll leave that plus sign. Now what do they have in common? Yes, they have a 2. So we're going to factor out a 2, factor out a 2, that becomes 3x plus 4. Okay, one last time. If we notice, this matches this, so that's my first factor, 3x plus 4. And then what I have left over, because those got factored out, part that I have left over is my last factor. So my x plus 2. My x and my plus 2. Okay, let's see. We got 3x plus 4. So not that one. 3x plus 4. Okay, so my answer is B. Okay, let's try again. This time they already set apart your B for you. So now you could just factor your first two and your last two. So if we look, I know the first one, they have an X in common and they also have a five in common. So I'm left with X plus two, double check, five X plus X is five X squared. 5x and 2 are 10x. Okay, so that one's good. And then for my last one, they have a 2 in common, and I'm left with x plus 2. All right, we notice that these are the same. So those go together. So x plus 2. And then so what's left over is your 5x plus 2. Okay, two more. Okay, so again, the middle is already separated for you, so that's nice. I'm going to rewrite it so I can see a little bit bigger. Okay, what does my first term have in common? They have an X. Remember, this right here, the first term is X squared, meaning that there's two X's. So if you take one X out, you still have one left over. But your second term, there's only one X. So once you take that one out, then the X is gone. Okay. And then if I were to just take out a two for my second term, it would not match. So let me show you what I mean. 
So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2x. And then divide that by 2 is 3. If you notice, this one's negative, this one's positive, this one's negative, this one's positive. They don't match, so I can't put them together. So instead, what you should do is you should factor out a negative 2. If you take out a negative 2, this becomes positive, and this becomes negative. So now they match, okay? This one now matches this one. So sometimes you need to watch your negatives and your positives so you can properly factor by grouping. But now you can take those two out, they're the same. So two X minus three, and we are left with X minus two. So two X minus three, X minus two, so B. Again, this is just another method for factoring. Personally, it's what I use because you can follow these steps every single time and it will work as long as your trinomial is factorable. Um, I will show you non-factorable ones later. But that's the one I use. If you guys like slide, divide, bottoms up, that's fine too. Okay, last one. 3x squared plus 3x minus 10x minus 10. Okay. What do these have in common? They do have an x and they have a 3. So I am left with 1x here and I am left with 1. Okay. And I'm here again because this is a positive one. We're going to want to factor out a negative 10. So if I take out a negative 10 for both of them, I am left with 1x plus 1. They match again. This one matches with this one. So I factor those ones out together. I get 1x plus 1. And I'm left with 3x minus 10.